Hello and welcome to my grid movement tutorial for JavaScript and HTML5 canvases. I'm going to try to make this quick because it's not too difficult. All we've got so far is an object that can keep track of keys that have been pressed, some code to set up the reference to the canvas, then we have a rectangle class and a circle class. These are basically the same as last time. The only difference is that we have this stroke rec call and this stroke style uh, set so that we can uh, see the outline. And actually, I almost forgot that we're going to want to set the stroke width as well because otherwise we won't be able to see it. So this is just going to be helpful later. And then we have an interval. And all right, without further ado, I'm going to make a class called grid. We're going to have the constructor take the width and the height and the color. And we're going to say this dot width equals width. This dot height equals height. And this dot box equals an array. We're going to have an array of blocks. And we're going to want to draw those, so I'm going to make that right now. So that when we have the blocks, uh, which is just basically the individual squares that make the grid, they're going to get drawn, and they're going to be rectangles. So they're going to get this function called. Um, so the blocks themselves, what we, what we want to do is have the uh, width and height basically tessellate across the screen with, you know, rectangles or squares. So we're going to say four. Um, it doesn't really matter what this part is, but, uh, oh, and also... I want to have some variables to keep track in the starting location because this starts in the top left corner. We can change these. We can have multiple grids, but uh, just for now. Now I'm going with tutorial canvas dot actually height in this case because it's the y coordinate and that's up and down, and then. Uh, it's arbitrary for this as well. And in here, we're going to have an almost identical loop. So I'm going to pop that down here. It's going to be X. And it really doesn't matter what the Q does. It really, really doesn't matter. For this calculation, we're not doing anything. These are the conditions. These are just syntax for the loop to function correctly. And we're going to have uh, a block. And it's going to be a rectangle. I'm going to start at x and y. And then we're going to take this dot width and this dot height and color. And then we're going to push that into the blocks. And then we're going to say this dot x plus equal this dot width. And then down here, this dot y plus equals this dot height. And this dot x equals zero. And that's just to match this. So it'll do the same thing across. Now, if we do that correctly, when we instantiate one, we call it board game board, you could call it dungeon, whatever you're thinking of it as. Um, I'm going to go with 70 by 70 because my uh, canvas is 700 wide and 700 tall, and I'm going to go with uh, blue. And if we call that, then what we should get is a nice 10 by 10 grid. All right, pretty straightforward. If we made this seven by seven, for instance, get a hundred by hundred grid. Takes a second to draw all those. Um, 
Yeah, so this is actually pretty small. I'm going to make 70 by 70 for demonstration. But uh, you can make it, you know, any any set that... Well, any set that uh, that perfectly sums to the width and height. So if I did maybe 35 by 70... Ooh, that's not quite right. Well, we can fix that later. But for now, let's keep it symmetrical. And... Uh, next thing we want to do is build something to walk around on it. So that's going to be agent class. And we're going to give that agent a body. And I'm going to make it a circle. And we're going to reassign its coordinates. So we'll start with 0, 0. But uh, its radius, we're going to go ahead and make um, the minimum of the, um, ah, yes, this actually has to take a grid as an argument because we want it, we want it to be attached to the grid. So we're going to say this grid, ah, we have to instantiate the agent. Okay, so let Smith, our agent, is a new agent, and the grid is board. Okay, and throw a color in there too. And so we're going to take that grid and we'll say this dot grid equals grid. And the this dot grid dot width slash two comma this dot grid dot height comma or divided by two. And the color. And we're going to want to be able to draw that guy. All right. So let's, uh, let's draw Smith. He should be in the top left corner. There should be a white dot. I don't see him. Okay. Ooh, that's why. Let's see if we can put them a little bit more on screen. No. Oh, of course. There we go. That's a little big as well. So I'm going to drop this down to divide by four. All right. Is is a smaller dot. And when we draw the body, so what we're going to do is. Uh, give it a location and that's going to be inside the grid on one of the blocks and I'm just going to make it random Set its uh, body's x and y location to be in the center of its uh, location object, which is a, a block. So if we say uh, this dot location dot x plus this dot location dot width divided by two, because that's going to start it at the x and go halfway across. And we do that with the height as well. For the y coordinate, that should be in the center of the grid, or the center of the uh, random grid spot that it's. Uh, yeah, so I'm just refreshing the page. It just shows up in a random grid spot, and it is centered in it. Now, the control function is going to make use of the keys pressed object. So we're going to say things like if keys pressed. 
W. And uh, inside of this, we're gonna we're gonna basically do uh, this dot x. I'm sorry, this okay. Yeah, this dot body dot x. Actually, it's y because it's W. It's up. So uh, minus equals this dot grid dot width. I'm sorry, height. Okay. It doesn't do anything yet. Forgot to call it. Also, it'll be overridden by this. So that's another thing. We got to make sure to update the location. So once we get all these made, uh, A S. D. S is plus, A is width, and D is plus width. Okay. And uh, actually, this is going to be a problem because we're running so fast that if we hold the key, we won't put a limiter on that, but just for now, I'm going to slow down the, the frame rate so we can see it execute. Um, we want to update the location. So, what we're going to do is inside of the control function, and actually, um, we're going to call it inside of this as well. Call the control function inside the draw function so that it's connected basically. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a loop. And we're going to build a makeshift uh, method to detect whether we're inside of a grid spot. And then whichever grid spot we're inside of, and it'll only ever be one because the center point can only be on a specific location and not in two squares, basically. Uh, that way we'll be able to set the location to that. So what, what we're going to have here is uh, if this dot body dot x is greater than this dot okay, uh, see, this dot grid dot blocks g dot x then it goes to the next check and we're going to want this to be y same thing and then we're going to want a thing quite a bit like that so uh, if it's x is less than x plus dot grid spot blocks g dot width and similar thing again this is y this is y and this is height and then this is going to be this dot location equals this dot grid dot blocks g all right so now hopefully that works hmm. not quite something wrong here ah that's not it nope okay Oh, these are all Y. That's Y. Okay. X. X. And there you have it. Basically, this is, will not be able to run off the grid because there's no grid spot to check into when it when it would be checking. And otherwise, you can move diagonally by holding both keys. You can move up and down. You can move left and right. And uh, that's pretty much the whole thing. I'll go over one more thing real quick. Um, if we say, for instance, inside the grid, uh, we set up some kind of arbitrary thing, less than point oh nine, I go like nine, and we put this and this. Uh, what will happen is some of them will be red. Some of them should be red. 
Mm. I gotta declare the block before I do that. First of that block. Actually, most of them are red. I'd like the opposite. Okay, now we got some red ones. It doesn't affect anything yet. But what's going to happen is um, down here, if we say if this dot grid dot blocks g dot color is not equal red. Only do this if the color is not red. And now what we should have is I cannot enter that square. So this would be an easy way to set up things like walls. Here I, uh, I can't pass. I'd have to go around. So you can build mazes. Um, you could set up. You could give um, an attribute like has enemy to a square. And if an enemy is standing in the square, then you can't enter it. And otherwise, that's it. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, let me know. If you've got a question, leave a comment. Thank you.